Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Today is day 20 in my daily recording of a coding bat solution while schools are closed. And with that, let's dive in. We're going to look at string match in warm up 2, and we're doing the Python solution here. Given two strings a and b, return the number of positions where they contain the same length 2 substring. So xx, ca, az, z, and xx, ba, az, yield 3. Since the xx, there's the xx, there it is. The AA, the AA, AA, and the AZ, and the AZ, and the AZ. Substrings appear in the same place in both strings. So we can look at the examples. Here's our first one that we just kind of did, and we see it's 3. In the second one, we can see it's 2 because we have AB in index 0, 1, and BC in index 1, 2 in both cases. And in this case, we get 0 because there's no substring of length 2 that have the same index location. So when I'm working through this problem, I kind of frame it around three big ideas. The first one is, you're going to have to loop through and, and do a comparison between the strings. And the problem is, if the strings aren't the same length, you're going to end up with an index out of bounds error. Python's a little more forgiving than Java, so don't rely on just using substring it and Python working. I would really encourage you to understand why it might crash, because when you go to Java, it definitely will crash. Um, the second thing is, since the reading frame is two characters, that means I'm comparing two characters at a time, the loop length, you're not setting the loop length so that the counter stops at the second last index. So let me show you what I mean. If A is this and B is this, we see that the second value, B, is the smaller, is the smaller string. So I'm going to use that to set up the parameters of my loop. And this XX represents the reading frame. So when I start my loop, when i is 0, I'm going to use indexes 0, 1. i is 1, we're going to use 1, 2. i is 2, we'll use 2, 3. i is 3, we'll use 3, 4. i is 4, we'll use 4, 5. But then we want to stop, because if I go to index 5, it's going to crash. Because notice that second x is no longer aligned with the letter. So we want it to reach that, that, that index there. And so we have to set up our loop to account for that. The third big idea is we have to run the full loop before exiting so there's no return statement in the loop. In the last couple of videos, there have been situations where as soon as we find our answer, we can, we can stop. So for example, um, if you have a list with numbers, is there a 9 in the list? As soon as you find a 9, you stop. You don't have to check the whole list. In this case, we have to check the entire, we have to go through the entire string to count the number of, of, of crossovers. So we put our return statement outside the loop. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. OK, so let's dive in. So the first thing you're going to do is I'm going to make a variable L. And I'm going to use the min function. I'm going to pass it the length of A and the length of B. And what that does for me is, and I'll just return it for now, it returns the actual length of the smaller word. So in this case, 6, in this case, 3. This one here, we have a length of 5 and a length of 2. It returns 2. Now, obviously, I don't want to return that. What I want to do is use that in my loop. So now we have the smaller length. The next thing I'm going to do is make a counter and set it to 0. And that's going to keep track of, this is going to keep track of the number of overlaps, we'll call them. And now I need to set up my loop. So if we take this concrete example here, I'm going to say 4i in range, and I'm going to start at index 0. And I want to reach index 4. And remembering that the loop setup for Python is it will include and exclude this. I want to go to 5, so and then I'm incrementing by 1. So remember, this is going to continue as long as i is less than this value. So as long as i is less than 5, so we will reach the 4. Now, here's the problem, though. What happens if our string is not a length of 6? Well, in that case, we have to, we have to change this value. So let's generalize that. How does 5 relate to the length of the string? And we know that simply it's the length of, or it's L, which is storing our smaller length, minus 1. So in this case, if the length is 6, this is going to be 6 minus 1, which gives me 5. So now we're going to have an if statement in here. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to say if A at I colon I plus 2. So this is going to grab two characters. Remember, substring is inclusive-exclusive. 
is equivalent to b at i colon i plus 2. And I don't need this bracket here. I put that there because a lot of Java programming. And what we're going to do, we're going to say ctr equals ctr plus 1. So now let me show you what a lot of students do that is a really common mistake, is they do this. They return ctr. So if I hit go, sometimes it returns nothing, but it always returns 1. And the reason why is because the minute we find our first overlap, we count, add 1 to counter and stop. But we can't. We need to keep going. So this return ctr has to be outside the loop. And there it is. This is a really great problem. It highlights a lot of real fundamental ideas, and I really do encourage you to, to stick with it. When you start dealing with loops and strings and lists, it can start to get a little challenging, but I, I really want to encourage you to stick with it, because once you master this idea of loops and, and strings and loops and lists, you are going to be able to tackle a whole wide variety of problems. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Cheers.